I gotta make sure I don't hurt my little hands. So it's like, so the wall, what if I scrape my fingers? So I can't do that. Uh, I'm very careful when I'm working, when I'm on duty. Hey everyone, I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with Ron Bumblefoot Thal. How are you, dude? Good, good. How are you? I'm really good. All right, I see you're holding something really special here, and I gotta ask, when is it appropriate to pull out the double neck guitar? Because, I mean, that's kind oh. of a peek in your face thing. It's a show off item. Uh, no, no, this is this is my main guitar. It, it's no, it's it's not just to try and be like, look, I got two. No, this <laughs> one is a fretless neck, so it's almost like having a slide. <laughs> So it, you play it a little bit differently than this one. So this is, you know, typical guitar. But this is for just everything else. And you can get... So, so I use both. So when and, so using this, is this where you feel more comfortable? Like if someone just hands you the, the traditional single neck guitar, you're kind of like, whoa, first off, this thing's a lot lighter. And I, yeah. what am I like, what am <laughs> I like supposed to do with all this space? Exactly. It's, it's like, where's the rest of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, this guitar is broken. There should be another one on top of it. Yeah, yeah. like where's the other half? Uh, so, oh, yes. so and this is the main guitar that I use for everything. This is the one that I bring with me all the time to ship rock. This is my ship rocked guitar that I bring so that I can play whatever million songs we're doing together that I can make sure that I got it covered. Yeah. And it is millions of songs that you're playing over on ship rock because you, you are in this all-star mega band. Um, how, what, what year number is this gonna be for you? Ooh, good question. I mean, uh, this is at least, yeah, I was gonna say, it, it's been going on for a long time that you've uh, been jumping on this cruise and playing a pirate. Yeah, it's either my sixth or seven, it might be the sixth. I think one year I missed because I had to tour. Uh, but I try not to miss it. It is yeah. a good time. Um, there's a lot of activities. Let's kind of run down the gamut of what activities do you like to do? Like, for instance, they've got beer pong and they, they also have tug of war. Are you a tug of war guy? I am such a wimp. You know, it's all about, I got to make sure I don't hurt my little hands. So it's like, so the wall, what if I scrape my fingers? So I can't do that. Uh, I'm very careful when I'm working, when I'm on duty. Yeah. Uh, to make sure I don't do anything to screw my hands up because I've, I've done some stupid things in my life. And yeah, so I try yeah. not to when, when I'm expected to play. It's like that yeah. Seinfeld episode where George Costanza becomes the hand model and he just has to protect his hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. All right, so maybe you're not a tug of war guy, but do you, yeah. do you actually throw on the old bathing suit and hit the beaches when you go into port or hit, hit, the, hit the pool, maybe do a, a belly flop here or there? <laughs> Definitely when we, when we dock. Usually me and a bunch of friends and my missus, we go out and, and we find a spot and we just lounge out and hang out and, and just get coconuts. And that, that's my favorite thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm more of a coconut guy than a beer guy. Yeah. Now this is this is a, a rock and roll ship cruise, right? It's called Ship Rocked. Um, it is heavy. It is heavy. Like you have to be seriously into the metal and music to come onto the, this boat because it is a good time, and your head is going to be pounding by the end of it because there's so much rock and roll to hear and enjoy. What have been some of your favorite memories of Ship Rocks of the past? Ooh, wow. Okay, now it's like trying to take a funnel of like a million things that happen and trying have one fall through. Well, well I would imagine one of the most magical moments was when the, the, the stowaways weren't even the stowaways yet and you kind of all got together for that massive jam session. There was that. I remember the first time jamming, uh, it was with David Ellison and it was this band. Uh, oh no, I'm having a brain fart. I can't remember their name, but uh, it was great. And we did Detroit Rock City this, this year's Shipped Rocked. It's going to be uh, hitting up the Bahamas, Half Moon K, uh, the Grand Turks, Dominican Republic. There's activities. There's uh, you, you can swim with fish. You can snorkel. You can uh, do yoga. You poker. I mean, th this, oh, the this gym. cruise yeah, the has gym everything. The, Killer. the food, the food. You're going to gain five pounds. I'm telling you. 
everybody, I'm talking to all of you, you're gonna easily put on five pounds of food on these boats are so damn good. Uh, every time I'm there, just everything is just, and it's great that you get to just hang out with everybody. You see the, the musicians that are playing, you hang out, you eat together, the people that are just always there, the familiar faces that you get to see every time. Is hey, that true, though? I mean, are the rock stars really just wandering around amongst the people yeah. or, or do they just hide away in their cabins? Uh, it's a mix. Everybody's different. Like some, they're more secluded, they're the more introverted and, and they're just going to, you know, do what's comfortable for them. But so much of the time, it's just people hanging out and just all just eating together and hanging. And just everyone's there. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Ron, are we in the middle of regrowing out the beard or what is our status right now, by the way? Uh, the status is I just have it rolled up into a little beard bun. Oh, it's uh, tucked. Just so it's just not a little straggle at the bottom. I'm, I'm trying to be kempt for you. I'm trying to look kempt. Uh, yes. Do you? So when you're you're rocking out on stage, you're getting stage ready. Do you do a fresh braid each time, or is, is I mean, I know I this do. is a weird question, but I I mean, listen, I'm a hair girl, so I got questions. Oh, yes, I do a fresh braid every time. You divide into three, and you do left over the middle, right over the middle, left over the middle, right, and then I got my little rubber band to put on the bottom and keep it all clean. And yes, every time it's a, a fresh one. It gets um, too itchy not to, yeah. You know, you are known for your collaborations. You've worked with everyone. Even, you know, before this interview was rolling, we were chatting about Lita Ford. You've, you've put in time with every artist out there. Um, what, is, what is your personal Rolodex really like? I mean, if you wanted to at any moment, can you just ping someone, text someone, call someone, or, or have the relationship stayed in a more professional realm where like, ah, I don't want to bug them right now. Is it chit chatty? It's a mix of both. There are some people like there's this one thread where it's like a dozen of us that talk pretty much every day. And it's a lot of different names. I am not naming anybody. And, uh, you know, there are people that just, you know, shoot the crap with and just, hey, how's it going? Hey, check this out. And then others that just on special occasions, happy birthday. So it's a mix. Now, I mean, obviously in this business, so much time is spent out on the road. Um, and, and planning tours and, and recording sessions months and months in advance. Um, is it fair to say that almost, you know, your next summer is potentially already booked or, or do you try and keep it loose and on the fly so that you can pick up things at the last minute? Before the pandemic, I was usually booked 12 months full ahead. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wanted to do something, it's like, all right, I'll be available in, you know, this year on this month kind of thing. And since then, I'm finding more of a balance of just not working so much, not doing so much and, and just being closer with family and, and just normal stuff. And I'm so much happier. I am. I'm finding a, a good balance between it. So I'm not going to do I'm not going to get back on the hamster wheel the same way. I, I was yeah, I, so I feel like so many artists. Fun. So many artists have um, share that same sentiment. I mean, like the pandemic gave everyone a moment to breathe and realize we can do this differently and we could we can be better and we can serve ourselves, right? Yeah, that's the whole thing is, is that you become a slave to what you do and mm -hmm. it's just nonstop and, and you become a robot. And you, I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to do that. And if you read articles from people that are in their later years of life, they all say the same thing. What are their regrets? I wish I didn't work so much. Mm -hmm. We should listen. Yeah. We don't, but we'll end up the same way and be like, ah, looking back on life, I shouldn't have spent all those decades on the road, missing all those weddings and funerals and this and that and, and everything and, and just not being there. So, so I'm finding a better balance. And now I'm doing a lot of interesting, fun, special stuff. Like I just came back from Armenia, did this incredible festival out there called Starmus. Star, Mus, as in music. And it's astrophysicists and ast astronomers and, and astronauts. And it's all about that. And then they have this big music aspect of it as well. So I played with Brian May and a children's choir and an orchestra and this incredible soprano opera singer and a band Sons of Apollo and this fusion band with Simon Phillips and Derek Sherinian and, and Rick Fierabracci and, and Serge 
from System of a Down sang a song and, and it was phenomenal and such a wonderful time. Like now I just want to have, I'm being selfish. I, I just want to have amazing life experiences yeah. with music. Uh, guitar Magazine said that your guitar playing was ridiculous in a good way. What artists do you look at? It doesn't have to be a guitarist, right? Just a, a musician. Who do you look at and say, yeah, they're ridiculous in a good way? Oh, oh, I mean, there's so, so many. Uh, you can go back to your childhood too. These can be influences. That, yeah, I'm not going to put you on the spot to like call out a best friend right now because they might be jealous, <laughs> you know, other people. Well, going no picking back to favorites the now. The beginning, the influences, you know, it wasn't musicians, it was bands. I was into bands. So it was Kiss was the first one. They're the ones that made me want to do this. They're the ones that made me want to play. And the Beatles that just made me love the music itself. Uh, and then from there it expands out. Uh, ridiculous. There are so many. Uh, well, I mean that I just played with Simon Phillips, the drummer, incredible. I'll just name the people I just played with because every single <laughs> one of them made me say, my God, they're, they're just ridiculous. You just can't go through uh, your phone and say f names of people. You're like, yes, 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 right? Yeah, and at this point, I'm playing with a lot of ridiculous people and just trying to keep up with them. Yeah. You mentioned Kiss as an early influence. Um, it's crazy how many other artists cite, you know, Kiss Alive as like, this is what got me up as a five or six year old boy to, or girl to grab a guitar or grab my drumsticks for the first time and become a lifelong fan. I mean, John Five, Sebastian Bach, all of them have said the same thing. That album, you know, just did something inside their small child body and also have them collecting memorabilia now. Are you a memorabilia Kiss guy? Do you have a bunch of stuff? I have some, I had my Kiss dolls and all the, the well-known posters from the, mm -hmm. the early years, the famous pictures. Ah, oh, I gotta find them, I have them somewhere. But yes, I was a, a Kiss collector and it was Kiss Alive when I was five years old when I heard it, that did it, it's that album. And the, sure enough, the first concert I saw was Kiss at Madison Square Garden. And that was hard to beat. Still, you know maybe the best concert I ever saw. I, I mean, concerts and bringing kids to concerts, it's, it's a great way to expose them to music, to make them understand that it's not just on this vinyl or on this downloadable device, but to see it live and the power of it. Um, do you think seeing a concert in person helped you be who you are? Had you not gone to a concert, would you have turned into Bumblefoot? As a kid, uh... I mean, not... I guess we're the sum of all our experiences. So it's hard to say what would have been if I didn't see that KISS concert. Uh, by that point, see, I, I was too young. My, my parents wouldn't let me go see some of the other tours. So finally it was the Dynasty tour in 79 that I got to see when I was nine. Yeah. And so at that point, I was already three or four years of a diehard KISS fan. I had the KISS Army sticker on my door, mm -hmm. which anyone who had that sticker knows that it was impossible to remove that sticker off your door. Like when it was time, like you were moving to a new house or something like that and you yeah. had to peel it off. It was impossible. They, whatever glue they used. <laughs> yeah. And Super glue. Paper, yeah, it was impossible. Like you're just scraping with razor blades and spatulas and whatever you could find and, and steam and, and nothing would take that sticker off your door. Uh, yeah, they Kiss made the best stickers. Before you go on stage, um, is there a particular, uh, I know that's so weird, they just made grid stickers, the end. I'm it's so just a weird thing to say. Uh, um, before you go on stage, uh, is there a song that you like to warm up to or something that you like to do for sound check in particular that seems to happen consistently or do you change it up every night or do you have a go-to song? It's kind of random. It'll be anything from Manowar to Tom Jones so just He's completely. a lady. Yeah, but I'll go deep cuts. Like, I'm going like, you know. She always was one. Uh, Thunderball. Or these hands, like, yeah, I'm going deep, deep cuts with the stuff. Same with Man of War. Uh, so random, but most of the time I'll try to play the songs that I have to play that night to make sure that they're definitely in my head. Uh, yeah.
So uh, I'll, like with Asia, with the band Asia, before going on stage, uh, I would sing the entire show just backstage, just in my room, in my dressing room. I would sing from beginning to end the entire show and then go on and, and sing the show. Yeah, like I would do every song in order just to make sure that, that I'm there. Yeah. Would you would you go through it at full energy or would you just kind of be like, really? Yeah. That's a lot to put on your vocals to basically do a concert twice in one night. It would help me warm up for when I, yeah. It, would, it was all yeah. right. Yeah, it wasn't screamy, raspy stuff, so it didn't tear anything up. But it just made sure that I didn't forget the words, <laughs> most of all. Yeah. The good news is, is the crowd will always help you out on heat of the moment. <laughs> Very true. Just hold the mic out and they got it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned, uh, and again, this was be before our interview started, that you um, got a call once from Lita Ford saying, hey, you know, can you jump on tour with me in two days? Um, how, when someone says something like that to you, first off, fun opportunity, but all of a sudden you have to learn new music in two days. <laughs> How do you how do you do the crash course studying? Do you have a secret to learning things fast? You focus so much yeah. and say, I need to retain this. And maybe other files might get deleted out of your head, you know, like you know, your passwords, your birthday, things like that. But you remember your songs for sure. Yeah. Are are you um are you a fiddler with your hands? When you're not sitting around and getting to have a guitar in your hands, do you find that you're fiddling and playing with things because your fingers need to move? Yeah, yeah, they're always something. Yeah, I think it's just, even that is just keeping them warm and ready all the time. So even if I'm not playing, yeah, yeah. When I'm driving, a lot of times, while I'm holding the steering wheel, I'm stretching my wrists and playing just to, to keep strengthening the fingers, yeah, just stuff like that, stupid guitarist stuff, yeah. Where are we right now in, in your, in this, is this your home recording studio? Is this where oh, you practice and rehearse? What, what is this space? About 20 years ago, I got a second house that I gutted and turned into a studio just as a place to make noise. So I don't live here, this is just a place I go just to, uh, to do this, yeah. So I've had bands record here and, and this is just where I get everything done. Yeah. You know, your career have, has so many standout points. You know, people would say there's the, the Guns N' Roses era. There's the, obviously Sons of Apollo. There's Asia. Um, the, the, there's the sitting around doing nothing because it's 2019 or 2020 and all of us are stuck at home stranded. Um, what phase would you describe you are in right now? Purple. No, I, I have no idea. Um, the semi-retired, uh, just enjoying life phase, I guess. Yeah, where it's like, um, I, over the pandemic, I was like, you know what? I'm retiring from a bunch of this. I'm just gonna just do half of what I did. Yet even with that, I feel like I'm doing great things now that I didn't do before. Like, like this festival, I just play it, things like that. Yeah. Uh, if anything, maybe being off the hamster wheel, I'm being more choosy and doing the things that are more special to me. And with that, I feel even more gratified. So doing less, but doing things that are, that feel more profound. Yeah. So song wise, and I'll put you on the spot, but I'm assuming, I mean, you're a Beatles fan. Um, John Lennon and his song, you know, I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. Is this mm -hmm. a song that really resonates with you and uh, that were you ever chasing that song and now you finally can appreciate that song and live it definitely i always loved that song uh yeah but now it's more personal definitely yeah great song really you see you can't mention songs to me because then i start there's a guitar in my hand and and i can't resist just Playing them all. I'm going to play the whole thing. Yeah, 
Love that song. Yeah. Okay. Stop. 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 Back to no. speaking. I, I love it. I love it. Um, what do you do with new music that you find in your head? Are you, do you, do you run into the studio and try it laying down right away? Or do you sit and kind of marinate on it for a couple of days? Usually I'll just be driving or something and this melody, this idea will pop into my head. So I yeah. quickly grab my phone, like song idea number 3,872. Save it. And forget that I put it there and six months later, I listen back to it. And I'm like, what is that? It's awful delete uh but sometimes it, it does become a song yeah all right bumblefoot thank you so much for hanging out with us today it really was a pleasure getting to know you um and it's seeing nice. you jam a little bit too thank you no my pleasure thank you so much for having me and thank you everybody for watching hey there thanks for watching access tv subscribe follow like and do all the good stuff and make sure you leave a comment below i don't know just let us know what your favorite access tv show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into or just say hi man i like to be told hi we love hearing from you that's the point all right keep it coming